So this is how you create a new project with Lovable. First, write the prompt. In this case, I'm asking for an app to track customer feedback. Then Lovable will take the prompt and start generating the relevant files. This will take a couple seconds. Once it's ready, then it should update the preview and show your first version of the app. So this is it. I can now create different customer feedbacks by adding a customer name, feedback type, and the content. Next up, I'm gonna add some custom instructions to my project, which is basically a set of guidelines you can add to your project to tell Lovable uh, certain things you want it to follow when building out your project. In this case, I've told it to make sure that all the UI it builds is responsive and mobile friendly. I'm then gonna ask it to add a nav bar. And once it's built, I expect that when I try for smaller screen sizes, that the nav bar is indeed responsive, and it is. Next up, I'm gonna show you how you can revert the change in this case, I'm going to add a footer. However, once I see it, I'm not going to be fully convinced. So I'm going to go to the previous edit and click on the restore button. And there you go, reverted. Next up, I want to show you the select tool. Using the select tool, you can isolate specific components and add them to your prompt as context. In this case, I'm selecting the customer feedback text and I'm telling it to replace it with all feedback. You can also attach images to prompts in Lovable. This is super useful when something is better conveyed visually. In this case, I'm taking a screenshot of a site and marking an area where I want metrics to be added. Then I'll write the prompt and I'll just attach the image. Lovable is able to understand what's inside the images and to take actions based on it. In this case, it's adding the metrics, but they're not really connected to the data, the number of feedbacks that we've inserted. So I'm gonna tell it to fix that. And there you go. You can also add images to the content of your application. In this case, I'm telling GPT Engineer to replace the logo of the navbar with this image I've attached to the chat. And boom, there it is. Connecting to GitHub is particularly useful if you're a developer and want to make edits directly in the code. In this case, I'm creating a repository within my GitHub organization. I can then navigate to a specific file, in this case, the main page, and I can make an edit directly in GitHub. In this case, I'm just removing the extra text of the placeholder when there's no data. I'm gonna go ahead and commit these changes. Going back to Lovable should show this external commit. Refreshing will show the updated text. Publishing your project is super straightforward. Simply click on Publish and then on the Deploy button. That should take a couple seconds and should give you a URL that you can share with friends. If you wanna rename the subdomain and also the project, Go to settings, simply choose a better name, and then click on rename project. Just remember to republish to update the subdomain. So now you have a first version of your app. However, since you don't have a backend, you'll notice that when you add data and then refresh the page, the data disappears. This is something that can be solved with Superbase. So this is how you use Superbase together with your lovable project. You will need to create a Superbase project first. In this case, I'm calling it feedback-io. Once you've created the project, you can go to the table overview and you can actually create your first table. In this case, I'm calling it feedback. And I'm gonna add a property called content of type text. Once you hit on save, then you'll see that a table appears and you can populate data directly in the Superbase interface. I'm gonna delete this table and show you that there's a different way to create tables, which is directly using the SQL editor. Simply write the SQL command and hit on run. However, as you will see, GPT Engineer creates these tables automatically for me, so I'll also delete this table. Next up, I'll show you the authentication tab, which is where you can manage your users. In this case, I'm gonna create a user with my email and a password. This will come in handy later. One of the cool things with Superbase is that they support a bunch of authentication providers in case you wanna add login via Google, GitLab, etc. Superbase also supports storage of files and edge functions. More on that later. Once you've created your Superbase project, you're gonna to wanna to integrate it with your Lovable project. Simply select the project and click on connect. This will take a couple seconds. Adding authentication to your project once Superbase has been connected is super simple. 
simply write add authentication or add login in the chat. In this case, it wants to execute a migration that will create profiles for my users. I'm gonna go ahead and click on apply changes. Once those changes are ready, then your application will be updated and you should be able to log in using the user you created before. Voila. To persist data in Superbase, you simply have to tell Lovable what data you want to save in the database. In this case, I'm telling it to save feedbacks. You'll see it's writing a migration to create the feedback table since I deleted the previous one. I'm going to prove this migration, which will be run directly by Lovable. Once it's executed, then Lovable will proceed and update the UI to connect to this new table. Once it's ready, then I'll be able to add a new feedback. This time, when I refresh, you'll notice that the feedback is still there. If I now visit the Superbase dashboard and go to the tables overview, you'll see that my record is there. Next up, I'll show you how to use edge functions from Superbase, which you can think of as pieces of functionality that are a bit more advanced that will require to be run in the backend. Before that, I'm going to add a couple more feedbacks. Then I'll ask for a more advanced future. In this case, I want the ability to generate reports from a given timeline, and I want AI to create a summary of the feedbacks within that timeline. Lovable will then understand that it needs to create an edge function to create this piece of functionality. If you inspect the changes, you'll see that it's created a file within the superbase slash functions folder. Here I'm highlighting a request it's doing to the OpenAI API. For this to work, we will need to configure the OpenAI API key in the secrets management dashboard of Superbase. Once it's added, then I can select a start date, an end date, and I can generate a report. This report will use the OpenAI API to create a summary. I'm gonna go ahead and do some small fixes like making the components scrollable. After fixing that, I'll create a new report. And there you go, a scrollable version of the same report. The last thing I want to do is make it so that users can download the report and store it as a file in their own computer. So I'm going to go ahead and simply write that. Wait a couple seconds and the button will appear. That's it.